Welcome to Ancient Military Tactics, a channel dedicated to providing visual representation of how ancient militaries operated and waged war, going into detail about the real tactics they used to win battles, and showing you, the viewer, how this would have looked in ancient times. In this video, we will be describing the tactics used by the Persian king Cambyses II, son of Cyrus the Great, against the young Egyptian pharaoh Psammeticus III in the Battle of Pelusium in about 525 BC. In a surprising twist of events, after the Egyptians held their ground and stood firm against their Persian invaders, Cambyses changed his tactics and implemented a more psychological approach up against the Egyptians by using their own religion against them. In today's culture, cats are revered, doted on, and maybe even worshipped. Ancient Egypt wasn't so different than today. Cats were a popular pet in ancient Egypt as they were closely associated with Bastet, the goddess of home, domesticity, women's secrets, fertility, childbirth, and of course, cats. To represent this image of the protector of women and the household, Bastet was often portrayed with the body of a woman and the head of a cat. Bastet was a deity to be revered and feared. A couple of her nicknames included Lady of the Dread or Lady of Slaughter. One of the easiest ways to offend her was to harm a cat. In fact, cats were so protected, respected, and revered that the punishment for killing a cat was death itself. One historian, Herodotus, stated that if even a building caught fire, Egyptians would prioritize saving their cats first, putting themselves in the building second. Also, if a cat died of a natural death, the whole household would mourn by shaving their eyebrows. Lastly, after death, the cat's bodies were taken to Bastet's sacred buildings to be embalmed and buried. When her temple was excavated in 1887 and 1889, archaeologists found over 300,000 mummified cats. Why is this important information, you ask? Well, the new Persian king, Cambyses II, knew of the Egyptians' extreme love of cats and he knew the uncompromising Egyptians wouldn't betray their beliefs that had been so ingrained into their culture since about 3000 BC. So, he used this information to his advantage. It is said that the battle between the Persians and the Egyptians started because the great Pharaoh Amasis insulted King Cambyses, who had asked the Pharaoh for one of his daughter's hand in marriage. Out of fear that she would be treated like a concubine, Pharaoh Amasis instead sent a daughter of the former Pharaoh, Apries. This in turn insulted Apries' daughter, so she revealed to Cambyses that he had been lied to. As some historians state, Cambyses was so insulted by this trickery that he mobilized his troops for war. Unfortunately for Egypt, Amasis unexpectedly died in 526 BC, and he left his young and inexperienced son, Samtik III, to inherit not just the kingdom, but also the impending Persian invasion. He had only been in power for six months when Cambyses and his Persian army had arrived at the eastern region of the Egyptian kingdom. To make matters worse, Samtik lost the majority of his Greek allies, who decided to side with the Persians, and he lost Phanes, one of his father's former tactical advisors. He also betrayed Egypt and provided the Persians with vital tactical information. So, whatever army he could muster up, he sent his troops to protect the fortress of Pelusium, near the mouth of the Nile River. By some miracle, the fortress remained strong and impenetrable. As one historian and strategist, Polyenus, put it, when Cambyses attacked Pelusium, which guarded the entrance into Egypt, 
the Egyptians defended it with great resolution. They advanced formidable engines against the besiegers and hurled missiles, stones, and fire at them from their catapults. It was at this point that Cambyses decided to change his tactics. Knowing the Egyptians' obsessive reverence for cats and other animals associated with their gods, he arranged to have cats, dogs, sheep, ibises, and whatever other animals the Egyptians held sacred at his front line. The Egyptians immediately stopped their operations out of fear of hurting the animals, which they held in great veneration. The cruel king Cambyses was also said to have captured as many cats as possible, and the Persians threw them into the fortress. This was the last straw that killed the Egyptians' morale. The reluctance of the Egyptians led to their unfortunate massacre. Herodotus estimated that 50,000 Egyptians were killed, versus only 7,000 Persians. Cambyses captured Pelusium, and thereby opened up for himself the route into Egypt. Some modern historians state this gathering of animals wouldn't have been practical, and the Persians' front line had instead only painted the image of Bastet on their shields, and this caused the Egyptians to surrender, out of reverence for their beloved goddess and fear of offending her. Whatever the true story may be, historians can agree that this decisive battle ended the sovereignty of Egypt in 525 BC. They unfortunately didn't regain true independence until 1952. Who knew that this defining and endearing characteristic of their culture would also lead to its colossal downfall? Thank you for watching Ancients Military Tactics, your go-to resource for the strategies and tactics used by ancient militaries throughout history to conquer their foes. We are a brand new channel, and your support would mean the world to us. So, if you liked this video and would like to see more, please subscribe and leave in the comments which military tactic you'd like to see next. Until next time, thank you, and have a wonderful day.